Hi, this is Lisa Kelly, Notre Dame author and class of 1993, and you are watching the Two Irish Brothers Show. Cheers and go Irish. Tyree, here's Tyree with the lane. Tyree, whoa, can he get there? Tyree at the 30, 20, 10, touchdown Notre Dame! Woo, 98, big ones! How's it going, everyone? I am Indy Sean 45. I'm Irish Benjamin 57. And together, the two of us make up this little ordeal called The Two Irish Brothers Show. You guys just saw it in our new intro. You know what to do. Hit the subscribe tab. Uh, hit the, uh, the like and or dislike tabs. It helps with the algorithm. Uh, the two travel packages for Irv Smith and Vince Rizzuto, respectively, will be in the description box below. And uh, don't forget, everyone, help us get to 500 subs. That's when Ben and I will start doing a uh, prize giveaway for those of you, the viewers. So help us reach that plateau. Yep. First things first. Mm -hmm. Calm down for myself in particular. This is a new week, Ben. Yep. New week. <clears throat> and as the saying goes in football, you focus on one hurdle at a time. This week is a new week. We're past Marshall, and now this week we have the California Berkeley Golden Bears. So, Ben, you start this one off. What is your take on on the California Bears? This is a tale of two different teams. And who would have thought that coming into week three, Cal week, that Notre Dame would be 0-2 and, and Cal Berkeley would be 2-0? I didn't know that. I didn't think that, <clears throat> you know. So, like I said, a tale of two weeks. And this this is a situation where, okay, we've learned. We've learned that, first off, okay, everybody looks vulnerable in college football right now except for Georgia, which is crazy, which is absolutely crazy. We've seen – we, we saw week two have a crazy amount of upsets. I'm not a betting guy, but none of the top 10 teams covered their point spread on Saturday. Like, that's craziness. So it's time to, like you said, calm down, regroup. And for this Notre Dame team, it is an opportunity to get back to winning. And this needs to be a game where you don't do too much, okay? Just go out, have a good time, and play ball. But not ball just play ball. Do. Play play hard ball. Play to the best of your ability. Play. Let it all hang out. Because we didn't. We haven't been seeing that really much through these first two games. And like I said, Ohio State, we were we had somewhat of an excuse. Marshall, there was no excuse. So we got to start turning this thing around now. Especially since with the playoff oh, yeah. chances over so early, if we want to have a chance at a New, at a New Year's Six Bowl, we got to pull our heads out of our butts and start playing Notre Dame football the way we know that it can be played with this yeah. group. But yeah. first, let's let's break down what the California Golden Bears have done so far. So, as you said, Ben, they're two and zero, and looking at their schedule so far, they took care of business over California Davis, thirty four thirteen last week. They or this. Yeah, this past weekend, uh, they took care of UNLV. Well, I shouldn't say taken care of. They beat them 20 to 14. But the bottom line is it doesn't matter if they take hey, care better of than us. Yeah, it doesn't matter. <clears throat> I'm, really, it's, it doesn't matter now if you play an FCS school or if you barely just get by a, quote, lesser opponent. Um, they know how they found a way to win. We haven't. So right. it, that part doesn't matter. It almost doesn't matter who you play anymore. So let's take a look at the offensive leaders for the Golden Bears. So their starting quarterback, uh, Jack Plummer, hasn't had a bad season through two games. He's a 68.9% completion percentage with uh, 546 yards, four touchdowns to two interceptions. On the ground, uh, Jay Knott, uh, halfback, leads away with 156 rushing yards and uh, one touchdown. Mm -hmm. And then receiving, you have Jeremiah Hunter with 157 yards and one touchdown as well. So it doesn't seem too sexy, but it's only two games. Yeah. Yeah. And and you know what? Statistics, if you're winning, nobody really cares. Exactly. If you're losing, everybody cares. And like I said, 
a tale of two teams. And this Notre Dame team has work to do. Work to do. Because the unfortunate thing, the unfortunate thing is coming into this game against Cal, statistically, Cal is the better team. That's the problem here. Just, just 46th tell them. in passing offense, 98th in rushing offense, 76th in total offense. Okay, you compare that to Notre Dame, 97th in passing offense, 110th in rushing offense, and 117th in total offense. Not too good through so, two games. I mean, I get the first game, you played Ohio State, probably the best team you were going to see all year, top to bottom, you know, and had then having the most depth. I'll give – okay, I get it. Marshall, on the other hand, is a different story. You know, we're not going to dwell too much on that. It's time to improve. This game is improvement time. I don't want to see – I'm not even expecting a blowout. Let's just start there. I'm not expecting a blowout. Let's oh, wait, wait till we get that. Wait till we get to that part of let's the video. Let's just win this game. Let's let's baby steps here, okay? Since since we can't run right now, because clearly we can't. Rushing offense isn't getting anything done. Since we can't run, let's walk. Let's do these baby steps. So let's improve. Absolutely. And, you know, it's back to the fundamentals. And you know what? The biggest thing that needs to happen in this game, we need to get some dang turnovers. We have none coming into this game. None. No fumble recoveries, no interceptions, none. Yeah, and those takeaways make make all the difference in a, in a game. Everybody knows that. And and it's crazy because Cal is coming in with all the momentum. And we're literally limping into this game. So the defense has to be more aggressive. Yeah. We saw an, we saw a very aggressive defense go against Ohio State. That defense didn't show up to play last week. No. No, but as we said, last week, everybody. Well, this week is, okay, let's get back to the energy level. Okay, the energy level needs to be here, not here. And But that's exactly where it is right now. Where There's no energy in our fan base. And can you really say that, they, that, that, can, that we can be blamed for that? No. We've seen, a t uh, okay, we had a nice competitive game against Ohio State, but there are no moral victories. We know that. But then you come in the next week and you get, you, you, you know, handed – your ass on a silver platter by a Marshall team that should never have been with you. In no, the you need you never. They never should have been in the game at all with us. And we should. And we never should. One, we never should have lost the game to begin with. Two, we should never have had to be in a catch up spot in that game. And like you said, three, we it never should have been close to begin with. Yeah. Because yeah. because all these these teams that we're playing right now in this stretch. They're not the same kind of teams as as the top dogs in the country right now. No, they're not. There's no excuse that we should be struggling with these teams. They're and four I'll, or five tiers below the top dogs. Yes, in the country. And I'll start off by saying this: We said in the last. Uh, now, by the time we we uh, drop this video, who knows what kind of changes could be made on the team right now? Of course, one of us will get on here and report it if something major happens, like if there's a firing or something. Yeah, but there's got to be some accountability, and that's from the coaches to the players. And I'm going to start by saying it: Tommy Reese is is number one on the list. Yeah. I think this is his last chance. If he keeps play, uh, with if he keeps up with this conservative uh, game plan and not letting it all hang out, then he should be out the door. I'm sorry, I don't like calling for people's heads, but if they're not doing their job right, then they need to go. Tom, and so far, Tommy has had a full season and two games into this season, and nothing's really changed. No. It really hasn't. No. I mean, and the, his his play calling is a big part of why that offense has failed so far. Mm -hmm. Not and, saying and, – and, and see, the unfortunate thing is you can't even just pin it on him. No, I'm getting to that. I'm getting to that. It's – these guys on the on the field aren't executing either. Let's start with the offensive line. You know, we all were excited when Harry Heastan got hired back because he helped build our offensive line into what it was before when we were having all these guys drafted in the first round. But where's the improvement? There's no there's that we're at a standstill right now, and we've got a great offensive line coach in Harry Heastan. But 
it's been bad. Let's just say it's been bad. We can't yep. establish a running game. They're not giving Buckner enough time to throw the ball. I'm not saying they haven't done it at all, but not right. The, the time he's been rushed is out, out greatly outweighed the times that he's had a chance to throw. And then Buckner's made some silly mistakes. The running backs, um, well, like I said, it kind of goes back to the line not opening the holes, but nobody's doing well on this offense. No, and, and none except and Michael Mayer. That's it. it. Michael Mayer is it. Yeah. And and Buckner might not even play in the Cal game. Yeah, it could it could be announced I mean, in the time that we're recording well, this to when we drop it. It could be a new he's nursing an injury. I yeah. mean, so we may not even see Buckner in this game. We might see Pine come in. You could also say Steven, I mean, Steve and Jelly, but I don't know if they're gonna follow that. Give far. You more- Go ahead. Sorry. I was going to say, we could even see Steve and Jelly, but I don't think they're going to go that far down the, de- the depth chart. Not unless we like are blowing out Cal, which, you know. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, Pine doesn't give me confidence right now. We yeah, saw what we, happened. We saw what happened last game. Yeah, that's the thing. People are clamoring for Pine to be the starter. Well, okay. Yeah, he threw a touchdown, but what happened first? He threw, he came in and threw a pick as well. So, so I mean, the, yeah. the big thing is, the two biggest things is O line play has to improve because it, without the O line, there's no running game, there's no passing game. I'm sorry, there's none. And the defense has to play with the same passion that we saw in Week One, not Week Two. Yes, and it's like you said last video. Okay, if you want to be great and you want to be elite and you want to compete for national titles every year and you want to have a legit chance of winning them, not just we made to the playoffs. You know, you have to be hungry. And we haven't seen that. We haven't seen the hunger. I haven't seen it. No. You know, no, I hate and, saying it, but it's true. We haven't. It, it everything has to to switch. And I hope Freeman, I hope Freeman can go, okay, look, you know, this is what we did wrong. This is what we need to do. This is how we rebound. And Freeman is a new head coach. You know, this is his first gig, A, B, new regime, new changes. There's always some growing pains, you know, even if it's my new. This year, there's a lot of growing pains. And this team has talent top to bottom. There's but right now, they're not playing the talent levels. They're not. And when when, when you start getting nervous as a fan – about a Cal team coming in and it's Notre Dame. Yeah, that's uh, that's not good. That says a lot. Mm-hmm. But I and will say this, though. Long, it has been a long time since we have started going three. Yeah. Long yeah. time. Oh, it's yeah, it has been a long time. And um, let me just say this though, 2011 for OU. So you got to go even further. That's more than a decade. Yeah, I know it's crazy that we're even having to have this discussion when we shouldn't be. But I will say one thing though: we have so many people right now across uh, social media and all the usual spots that are saying that Freeman's in way over his head and want him gone already. You people got to stop with the stupid crap. This mindset that you have is absurd, and you should be locked up in a mental institute and put in a straitjacket. The guy has only coached three games as a head coach. You have to give the guy some time. I mean, I'm pissed, too, at what's been going on. This is abysmal what we've seen through two games. But to say that the guy needs to be gone and is over his head after three games, you people are freaking stupid. Well, and it's... And it goes even further than that. It's okay. Buckner was literally looking one receiver in the eyes. Yeah. All throughout the Marshall game. Can, can is that Freeman's fault? I, I mean, I, I sure hope that Freeman is not saying, okay, look at just that one guy and, and just throw to him. You, I, no coach I, would say that. I would no coach would say that at all. A competent coach like Freeman would not be doing that. So that's not on him. I mean, the drops that we've seen in the games, the penalties that we've seen in the games, just the mental errors, the the missed tackles, 
that's uncoachable stuff. And what I mean by uncoachable is the coach has no say in that matter whatsoever. Right. All the coach can do is address it the next week and, and make guys run or bench guys. That's all he can do. He can't go out there and catch the pass. He can't go out there and make blocks. Well, all I know is this is the week where we need to start seeing <clears throat> all that, all the mental, the, all these problems go away, even if it's gradually. We also need to see who these leaders on the team are, and we need to see what our identity is as a team because yeah. we haven't seen that yet through two games. No. No, and we usually you should have that before the season, but right now we haven't seen squat when it comes to that. So, with that said, <clears throat> Ben, the fun part of every preview score prediction. Now, myself, based on what I've seen so far, obviously I can't say, even though this is a, quote, lesser opponent, I can't say that we're going to beat them by 30 or 40. My score prediction is Notre Dame 28, Cal 21. Yeah, <laughs> that's, uh, yeah, I see what you're getting at. I, I, I see it, and it's, it is sad that, 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 that that's what it is. And it's even worse for me. I say 28, 24 Notre Dame. Fair. And let's, I mean, I'm giving everybody strokes. I'm giving John at always Irish a stroke. I'm giving Lisa Kelly a stroke. I'm giving George a stroke. Everybody's getting strokes this week, man. You better get out that AED. Yeah. But no, it is what it is. Heart attack, so maybe not the AED, but you know what but I'm it, saying. It's just trying Ooh. to get that first win and get a little load off your shoulders. And I mean, maybe we're wrong. You know, best case scenario, they come out angry, blow Cal out. We get back to business. Sweet. But I got myself, I got to see that first. And then maybe yep, my score prediction will change. That's, that's best case scenario. Obviously, worst case scenario. I'm never going to pick, three. I'm never going to pick my team to lose, no matter how bad things might get. But yep. my score predictions reflect how I'm feeling right now. And I'm sure it's the same for you. Confidence but, is down. Confidence is yeah, down. You know, exactly. So, yep. So, all right, everyone, that just about wraps it up. And, you know, Ben, anything you want to add? Yeah, nothing. All right. Well, on that note, everyone, I am ND Sean 45. I'm Irish Benjamin 57. And as we always say, no matter what, God bless, good night, and go Irish. Go Irish. Beat Cal. <laughs>